how often do you play with off-meta builds in Destiny 2? From what I've seen, the most common build players use tend to be popular YouTube builds that are best of the best. Such examples can be seen on YouTube right now if you simply go ahead and look for Onslaught builds. But what if I was to tell you that you can complete Onslaught and Legend Onslaught mode with off-meta builds that are both weird and fun to mess around with? Today, I'm going to show you just that with three builds focused on the Hunter, Warlock and Titan. Now, if you want to skip the chatter and go straight to the action, then the dim links for the build will be placed down below for all to access. It's quick, easy to upload, and you can customize your liking. Also, if you enjoy these video types and want to see more of it, please do comment and share so we can make this a regular thing. So, let's make a start. How many of you here like crabs? I've never eaten one before, but I've seen them in the wild. Well, today's hunter is going to envision the idea of going all out crab by using Triton's Rice and Edge of Concurrence, Exotic, to create a pretty strong ad clearing build with good defense. Triton Vice is an exotic that not many people use as they don't generally enjoy Glaive so much, but actually people should be sleeping less on Glaives, especially in something like Onslaught mode. The exotic trait, How Build Reach, increases our Glaive reload speed and melee damage while surrounded. Final blows overflow around the magazine, and Final blows detonate if the Glaive damage matches our subclass. You're getting around a plus 50 to reload speed, a 100% damage increase, and 350 damage per explosion made just from the Glaive alone, which is amazing when you combine this with something like Edge of Concurrence Assaultic Effect. Further combine this with our Arc subclass traits such as Spark of Beacons for Blind Effect and Spark of Resistance for that extra damage resistance, and you then become a mighty shell of a warrior. The amount of enemies you can lock down just from one blast alone makes it very viable for legend ad clearing. So to complement the build, I chose to have Edge of Concurrence, as its Lightning Seeker perk allows the weapon to attack multiple areas and enemies all at once. However, any other Arc Glaive is fine here, and will give you more room to explore. Having Tiger Sprite with Connect Tremors and Overflow is a good backup option to have, just for dealing with all enemy types, and being useful in case you do run out Glaive ammo. Lastly, the Hot Head with Explosive Light is my main heavy that has been useful for dealing with champions and bosses in each wave. For what I was running, I had Pulse Grenade for its long lasting damage. Lethal Current, where after dodging, your next mini attack has increased lunge range, jolt targets, and creates a damaging aftershock. Tempest Strike, where while sliding, activate your charge melee ability to at least devastate uppercut attack that travels and attacks nearby enemies. Spark of Beacons, where while amplified, your arc special weapon final blows creates a blind explosion. Spark of Resistance, which gives you a 25% damage resistance while surrounded. A spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. A spark of Ions, where defeating jolt targets creates ion traces. Our next build is designed around ad clearing as well, but this one is focused on two common exotics that get quite a bit of love around dealing with waves of enemies. Utilizing Narcotic Grip, Poison Effect with Sir subclass is not only going to spread poison and scorch damage over time, but the damage will be huge enough to be very viable against bosses when you need it most. The numerous enemies from one explosion to another, with thanks to his chain reaction like effect, with increased scores to set targets will overall allow more destruction from the given player and also garner ability energy for more overall usage for melee and grenades. Basically, Nicola's Grip's exotic trait, Grasp of the Devourer, enhances our melee attacks to deal with additional poison damage as we play. Using what we learned before, Using Incinerate Snap with Ember of Ashes and Searing makes sure any enemies large or small we face will get absolutely nuked the moment they attack. And since most of the damage is solar base, we can recover our abilities quite fast. It's just a continuous wave of solar and poison damage that never truly stops. Now pairing this with Austria Striga makes the most sense for the build. The weapon shines best when paired with builds designed for maximizing ad clearing, and since it can overflow its rounds the more poison kills we get, this can be described at best chaotic in the right hands. I then decided to add Drang with Incandescent on it for something fast and viable with a surplus chosen. And then having someone like Unwavering Duty with Incandescent finishes the build off with dealing with bosses and ultras when the time does come. Although having a rocket launcher on hand will be useful as well. With that, I then chose to have Fusion Grenades for their quick cooldown and scorch damage they apply with time. Aspects with a touch of flame where fusion grenades effects explode twice. Heat rises where you can fire weapons, grenades and mini while gliding. 
You also get MIDI energy if you net a final blow while gliding. Ember of Ashes where you apply more Scorched targets. Ember of Searing where defeating Scorched targets grants MIDI energy and Fire Sprite. Ember of Benevolence where applying Restoration or Radiant to allies increase our grenade, MIDI and class ability regeneration. And Ember of Torches where powered melee attacks against combatants makes you and allies radiant. Our last build is the best timing build if you like explosions and launching enemies across the map with Void. This has everything a player will want for survival, such as damage reduction, overshields, and increased healing. But we have also added the extra flair of dealing with adds via volatile rounds and good old self-defense enclosure explosions. I know volatile rounds aren't as good as they used to be back in the day, but they are still viable depending on the weapons and build users use. And this build is one of them that truly shines in onslaught mode. Seven's Enclosure, a sort of trait, states Powered melee final blows unleash a damaging explosion. Finishers and final blows against a more powerful target increases the radius and damage of the explosion. It's pretty straightforward exotic that goes crazy when you use the finisher and move one after another. Although using a power melee is ideal, the finisher is better since we combine this with Echo Cessation to make sure each finisher we do will spread volatile effects to other enemies nearby us. The reason why this is important is that with Control Demolish aspect on the hand, we can get constant healing back just from triggering the volatile round for me and my team. This means if we are in a dire situation and we need to heal quickly, but don't have the means to do so, as long as something is marked volatile, I can easily heal ourselves as long as we are nearby. This is something that if you use a surface enclosure a lot, you will see just how nutty it can get in a matter of seconds, as long as the enemies you face are in the enclosed area. For weapons, I went with the Recluse with destabilizing rounds, just to expand on the build's volatile nature. After that, I then went with Mountain Top with Warpool and Ambitious Assassin, only because I needed something strong and could deal with certain enemy types in the later rounds, like Knights and Servitors. Then to top this all off, I added the Deathbringer Rocket Launcher, as this Dark Deliverance Exotic perk is great for bosses in the final waves, but also adding volatile rounds to them makes it even more sweeter. For what I run, I have Magnetic Grenades for their short cooldown and decent damage. Control Demolition, hitting a target with Void Abilities or Volatile Explosions makes them volatile. Further damage to volatile targets causes them to explode and grant health back to you and allies who are nearby. Bastion, where casting a Super and Barricade grants an Overshield. Echo of Instability, where defeating targets with Void Grenades grant Volatile Rounds. Echo of Explosion, where Void Ability Final Blows cause targets to explode. Echo of Provision, where damaging targets with Grenade grants melee energy. And Echo of Station, where applying a finisher on a target creates a burst of Void Damage that causes nearby targets to become volatile. So there you have it, I hope you all enjoyed these off-meta builds. If you'd like to see more off-meta builds on this channel, including your own builds, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content or want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.